Epicor Eclipse Simplified, where every topic is broken down into a bite-sized chunk. Let's dive in. Sales order entry is a massive subject, but the great thing is once you're comfortable with it, you'll also understand transfers and purchase orders with no problem. From the quick sales order entry widget, search for your customer and then either hit enter or click on their name. These tabs are how you search through the order. They are what you think they are. It is that obvious. The order summary pane here contains information that you can also enter in the header. Tax exempt information goes here, enter a tax exempt number and choose their code. These codes are set in the control maintenance file by your IT team, so your options will not be the same as ours. You can also put internal notes that only you see and shipping instructions. Freight in exempt, freight out exempt has to do with direct ships, which we'll talk about later. But if they're marked no, the freight will come through from the AP side to the sales order side on a direct ship. If they're marked yes exempt, then the freight will not pull through Back to the body, let's enter our first item. Meg Green Tape, half inch. I recommend three search terms separated by spaces with two or three characters each to get you close. You will know based on your system the best way to search. But here you can see I only have two options. Makes it a whole lot easier. If I was searching for CH1 Crete Heat Modular Panels right here, you would notice I have CH16B, CH101, only one item has CH1. There's 11 items that have CH1 and something else after it. That is where the period comes in. If you do a period after a term, it means search for where this term is exclusive. And there's actually only one item in our system that uses CH1 exclusively. If you put a period before your search, then the system will go to the internal ID record. So putting the period at the end searches for an exclusive term, putting a period before it will refer to the internal ID, which we talked about in another video. On the totals page, you'll see tax, you can add freight, subtotal. You can also take a payment, which you can also do in closed counter order. The status page takes a bit more of a deep dive. You can go up to the options and print. You have the order status, and you also have your ship via. You'll notice I have a few things circled here. That's because I love those options and use those most frequently. You can see that in red, I've chosen all the call tickets. What those do is send a job to your calling queue every time one of those statuses are satisfied. Remember, we set up our calling queue right here. In green, I have the ship tickets in a warehouse that is using the RF guns, WMS, every time those statuses are satisfied, they send the order straight to the guns so nobody has to interfere or touch them like you do in a calling queue. Pick up now is fun because there's a setting that will play a tone on the warehouse guns every time that is selected. So let's talk about how each status fills an order. Or better yet, let's talk about why I hate ship when available. So let's say this is our current inventory on hand in our warehouse. We have a sales order for something more than what we have on hand. We have a couple purchase orders that are coming in. You can see here in red that they will satisfy that. So if we happen to choose ship when complete, it creates one generation. It will wait until purchase order one and two are received and you have enough on hand to satisfy the entire sales order. If you choose when specified, the system can do two things. If you have a date selected and everything is not on hand, there's a ship when specified behavior that IT will set for you. And if you have it set to yes, then it'll create a back order. It'll create two generations and everything that you have in stock will be shipped on generation.001 and everything that you do not will be .002. And let's talk about when available. So our sales order .001 is for two widgets A's, four, one, and six but we don't have everything on hand. So we create generation one, which is gonna satisfy with everything we have on hand, which then creates a back order. But then when we receive purchase order one, it creates generation two, because now widget A and widget B came in, they were received, and we now have a back order generation three, because we're waiting for purchase order two to come in, which has our widget D in it. But here's the problem. Widget D 
is buried on the pallet. There's multiple of the other items in there. And Timmy, who's receiving it, he can only carry one D at a time. So when he finally gets to a D, he finds a couple of them, he scans one, and he knows that it goes into location by him carrying it. So he only scans one. The system goes out and scans and says, hey, there's a D available. And it creates generation three with a new back order for a widget D. Timmy walks back. He grabs another one. He scans one. He goes and puts it away. The system says, hey, there's another one available. Let's ship one. And it creates another back order. And he does it again and again. And before long, you have seven generations. And that's why I hate ship when available. Now, there are a couple options available to get around this. One being ship item complete. The other one being just receive all the Ds at once, bozo. That's certainly an option. And you can also combine these at certain points within the software. Manifesting is a great place that you could combine them. But if you do not combine them, the customer could be getting seven different generations, which is seven different bills for the one order that he placed. Most customers don't like that. However, most customers don't like waiting. So I'm not saying to never use ship when available. I'm saying to use it wisely. But what about this direct? A direct is interesting. A direct order or a drop ship order has a sales order header and a sales order total and a sales order body. But it also has a purchase order header, a purchase order total. Every drop ship done within Eclipse is done at the sales order level, not at the purchase order level. And your sales order becomes your purchase order. Let's see what this looks like in Eclipse. It immediately pops up the purchase order header. Terms prepaid. Notice it pulled the internal notes from our sales order. You can also put vendor instructions that only show up on the vendor side and not on the sales order side. So if we go to header right now, notice it's the customer Eclipse test. That's because we are on the sales order line. If we go to the PO line and we go to the header, notice it's to our vendor prepaid and the vendor instructions. It depends on which line you have selected, the PO line or the sales order line. That goes the same for the ship via. Right now, if we sent this, if we chose options and we emailed this to our vendor, they would have no clue how to ship this because we have not selected a ship via. So you must enter a ship via on the PO line so that the vendor knows how to ship it. This line is how we are going to get it to the customer this line is how the vendor is going to get it to us. If you go to totals with the PO line, you'll see that there's $47. If you go to totals from the direct line, it's $640. Please do note our disclaimer and do not get yourself into trouble by trying to do something you have not been trained to do by your own company. We always encourage you to ask questions early and often.